Hello, YouTube friends. Today I'm reacting to Adam Ragusia. Rag I'm sorry. I feel like I'm going to butcher his name. I'm not really familiar with his videos, so I apologize. Adam. I'm just going to go with Adam. Uh, today I'm reacting to Adam Ragusia's Meat Juice is Not Blood and the Difference Matters. I'm intrigued, so let's hop in. The video features some very mild shots of a very small amount of human blood. If that's gonna make you pass out or something, maybe stop operating heavy machinery now, or, you know, watch something else, okay? Contrary to what people say, this is not blood. This is not blood, this is not blood, and this is not blood. There, that's blood. Viscous and fire engine red. People may call this a bloody steak, and while there is probably some trace amount of blood in all meat, that's not what you're looking at here. What you're looking at here is meat juice, which goes by a number of more technical or scientific names that we will examine. More importantly, I'm here to try to persuade you that the difference between blood and meat juice is meaningful. This is not just some little bit of idle semantic quibbling from a pedant, though that's obviously something tells me meat juice is not really the technical term, but we can maybe get into that later. <laughs> the kind of thing that I would do. Now, the difference between blood and juice is really big, both culinarily and culturally. When animals are slaughtered for meat, their major arteries are cut and they are hung so that gravity pulls out nearly every drop of blood. The circulatory system is fluid by design. Stuff flows easily through it and it goes out onto the abattoir floor. At least that's if you do it right. If the animal is... Just gonna say here, there are drains it's not just like sitting on the floor. It's generally sloped and has drains. That way you're less likely to get any sort of contamination from blood because that's not something you want. Really scared or otherwise excited right before slaughter, then the smaller blood vessels might contract a little bit and trap a little bit of blood inside the meat, resulting in what is known as fiery carcass in the meat industry. Google image search fiery carcass at your own risk. But there should be- Which Everything in the meat packing industry is designed at this point, it wasn't always, but at this point, everything is designed to minimize having jumpy or scared animals going into the slaughter. They don't really know what is happening and they're sort of led along. Honestly, there's a lengthy sort of drawn out process to ensure that animals, because they've most likely been transported before actually arriving at a facility where they will be slaughtered, that they can have the time and space to actually relax before being led into generally series of tunnels that actually help calm them. So having animals have a lot of anxiety while they're being killed isn't actually that common anymore. Be hardly any blood left in here. That liquid is known in the industry as purge or weep or drip. Meat is like three quarters water and some of it is going to gradually leak out. Yeah, I wanted to actually bring this up if he didn't get to it and he kind of did, but for every pound of muscle, it's carrying three pounds of water. So a lot of this liquid is actually water. Kind of crazy out as the vacuum packaging accumulates and retains every drop. Purge is meat water with a number of proteins and dissolved solids in it. We'll get back to that. There is some blood in this chicken, and let's see if we can find it. There, when I sliced into that bone, blood cells are made in the bone marrow, which you would know if you've ever broken a raw wishbone or something before. Technically, that's not blood inside the bones. It's just blood cells. It's missing the number one component of whole true blood which is, of course, plasma, the watery portion of blood. Let's keep looking for that real blood. Hey, there's a couple of streaks of blood there under the breast, a couple of vessels or nerves or something. Here's some kind of vessel near the wing joint. That looks like blood to me. Lots of tiny little spots of blood that get trapped and couldn't make it out when the chicken was bled. And there's probably microscopic quantities of blood still clinging inside the capillaries and other teeny tiny vessels that we can't even see. 
Regardless, we can see that blood is just very different from the protein-laden water that comes out of meat. Saying they're the same is like saying that, you know, coffee and tea are the same. We're gonna need some real blood to examine, and because carcasses are bled so effectively at the slaughterhouse these days, there's almost no butcher shop left in the United States where you can just buy, like, a pint of cow's blood or whatever. The blood never makes it this far. The slaughterhouse... Left any war? Was that ever a thing? I'm sorry, did people ever actually go and ask to buy blood? Collects the blood from the killing floor, and parts of it get used for pharmaceuticals, parts of the blood get used for animal feed or plant fertilizer, and in some cultures, people eat the blood, though rarely here in the States, which is why if I want to show you some blood, I have to draw my own. Gotta sterilize my skin, and hey, that ought to do it. Grab a medical-grade lancet, and here, we should get some actual blood. The reason blood is so thick and red is because it's only about half water. Blood is almost half red blood cells, which are relatively big, solid things. Actually, the particular shape of blood cells makes it so that blood is very thick only when it is still. When you can... Okay. I'm still stuck on this, but like, I wonder if that's even a thing at the States because like collecting blood for those purposes, because it makes sense and I've heard of it being used for all of those things before, but it's just not something that I ever covered when learning about the meat industry. So anyway, still scratching my head on that one, if anyone wants to fact check swirl the blood around or move it around in some way, it thins out. The red blood cells are very susceptible to shearing forces, and so still blood is thick, moving blood is thin. And of course, it starts to set up solid as soon as it touches air, thanks to the platelets that make your blood clot to close wounds. When you cook blood, as in this pre-cooked English-style blood sausage, the blood sets up really firm into something like a cake. In fact, blood has albumin in it, the same protein protein in eggs that coagulates at relatively gentle heat and that helps to hold your cake together. The same protein is in blood. And that makes blood an excellent thickener for soups and stews and such. You just stir a little bit of it into a simmering liquid, like a starch slurry. They do that in France. This is a bowl of tofu and duck's blood soup filmed somewhere in East Asia, where eating blood is generally not considered taboo. But it is taboo elsewhere, most notably in Abrahamic religious traditions like Islam. No Nobody knows where the blood-eating taboo came from, historically at least, but in the meat industry they refer to blood as liquid meat because it's nutritionally so similar to meat, and it's just as safe to eat as long as you cook it. I mean, if you ate a whole lot of blood, you could potentially get iron poisoning, and that's one theory as to where the blood taboo came from. Uh, another hypothesis is that it might have had to do with uh, pagan animal sacrifice, which was associated with blood drinking. Regardless, a lot of people in this world regard blood eating with some amount of disgust. And that's one reason why it matters that the purge collected in this vacuum-packed beef is not blood, even though it is very dark red. Beef has more of the particular protein that tints meat juice red or pink or purple, and that protein is myoglobin. Meat juice is mostly water with a little myoglobin mixed in. Now, I've said that on the internet before in a TikTok video that I made a long time ago, and apparently the audio from that video has gone kind of viral. People dub it over their own videos of really, really red, juicy, rare steaks that they're cutting up, and that's cool. But people comment on those videos, and one thing that I see them saying is, hmm, water with a little myoglobin in it. Isn't that what blood is? No, 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 that is not blood. The protein inside red blood cells that makes them red is hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. Yeah, so hemoglobin is in blood. Myoglobin is what's in your muscles. And that is something that uh, affects the color greatly, which is why your meat changes color. He's probably going to go into this. If he doesn't, then I'll try to explain. But Myoglobin and hemoglobin are chemically similar, though hemoglobin is four times the size. They both contain heme, which is the iron complex that binds to oxygen from your lungs. The function of hemoglobin is to carry oxygen from your lungs down to your tissues. The function of myoglobin is to store that oxygen directly inside your muscle tissue, inside the muscle cells. Myoglobin stores oxygen for future use by your muscles. They are similar molecules, but they just aren't the same stuff, and there's normally no myoglobin found in blood. 
One person on TikTok said, wait a minute, if there's no myoglobin in blood, then why do they search for myoglobin in a standard medical blood test? I'm guessing this person maybe worked at a lab or something. And the answer is they look for myoglobin in your blood because it would be an indication of muscle injury, that the fluid from inside your muscle is spilling out into your bloodstream due to some injury or something. Indeed, when... Yes, so uh, as he was saying, the molecules are very similar, but... Uh, Essentially, they shift when it's actually carrying oxygen or oxygenated, and that shift causes that little change in color. That is why myoglobin actually results in a different coloration in these muscle tissues, and as it degrades while cooking, the structure itself deteriorates, which is why you lose that red color when you cook meat. We injure an animal by slaughtering it for meat, some residual blood probably does spill into that intramuscular water, which in turn leaks out as purge. But there's probably very little blood in there. And if you have a problem with trace blood in the juice, then you've got a problem with meat. There's trace blood in the meat, too, and no amount of washing or salting will get it out. Though probably there's so... Yeah, because, I mean, you've got blood connected to everything blood is such an integral part of our bodies it's what brings oxygen everywhere it's how we are able to do really just about everything so yes there is trace blood in your muscle and that's i mean that's to be expected to not expect any to get in your muscle is just unreasonable little blood that you'd never taste it the slightly metallic taste of red meat is mostly due to the high myoglobin content not trace hemoglobin and cooking does i just mouthed iron in case you guys were noticing and that's because the myoglobin is carrying the iron so kind of synonymous in my head that is the iron carrier so i don't know that we would necessarily recognize the taste of myoglobin specifically but because that is what's carrying the iron, that is kind of the metallic taste you're gathering. And get rid of heme proteins, it just changes their color to brown and gray, as in the case of this medium steak that I made for the kids. We use the same color-changing phenomenon to tell when chicken is cooked all the way through. We say the juices should run clear, which really means the juices should be translucent brown instead of translucent pink. Chicken white meat has very little myoglobin because chickens don't fly very much, so they don't actually use this chest muscle. It just doesn't need much oxygen. But even the dark red myoglobin juice from beef does not taste as powerfully metallic as blood does, because there's proportionally way less heme protein in here compared to actual blood. The juice is just mostly water with a little bit of other stuff in it. Like, I think those little white clumps under the microscope are free fats that clumped up in the cold of the fridge, I think. Ultimately, the biggest difference between blood and meat juice to me is that they just taste really different. Blood cooks up really thick and has a powerful metallic taste that you know from like cutting your lip and stuff. Meat juice is very, very thin and it has hardly any metallic taste at all. It mostly just tastes like meat. So there you go. That's why a rare steak is not a bloody steak, or at least it is little more bloody than any other piece of meat. That liquid is juice and the difference matters. Still don't really agree with the use of juice here, but at least he did include purge and the other words it would go by more technically. Like always, let me know in the comments below if there are other videos you'd like me to react to, and I'll see you guys next time.